Sad Nam lovely people. It's Amanjot Kaur here and um, live from this wonderful St. John's uh, Lai in Woking in Surrey in UK. And um, tonight um, I wanted to talk to you about postnatal depression. Uh, for those of you who have not met me before, I teach pregnancy yoga. Uh, I also uh, a qualified uh, kundalini yoga instructor and a pregnancy yoga instructor. I'm also a mother of three. I'm married um, and been with uh, my husband for 10 years. So uh, I kind of also have my own personal experience with depression and I it took me three years to now actually share some thoughts and insights about that. I wanted to uh, talk about the fact that in nowadays world, uh, uh, women perceived in such a way that we can deal with everything on our own, and we are quite capable. And you know, we sometimes have eight arms, <laughs> like those goddesses. You know, <laughs> we have a six-tracked mind. We can multitask. You know, we're kind of quite and interesting uh, human beings. Having said all that, um, when a child arrives in your life, uh, and if that's your first child, or it doesn't have to be just your first child, it could be your second, third, the tenth, the dynamic in the family changes like this overnight, basically in the moment the child is born. And the weight of the responsibility that you have is uh, so heavy that you know you can't shake it off this is forever you know no matter how old your child will be you will feel responsible and so um, the a few things that come into effect uh, is the sleep deprivation that on the from the yogic uh, understanding from the understanding of your anatomy is uh, de uh, sleep deprivation uh, robs you uh, robs your energy levels in such a way that you will not have enough energy to work your frontal lobe and frontal lobe it's like kind of a mix um, maker uh, mixer so it will uh, mix both left and right hemispheres or the thoughts that come into left and the right hemispheres or in other ways like negative and a positive so let's say you you love your partner uh, you'd never want to harm them and then on the other hand you really want to scream and shout and maybe throw something at them so these two thoughts will be conflicting and they come into um, interaction now your frontal lobe when there's enough energy enough development in the frontal lobe will be able to recognize these two uh, impulses and will mix it up and it kind of like come on <laughs> let's be neutral and let's let's be above all that and you know, let's um, come up with a, a civil, civil response. However, uh, when the sleep deprivation robs you of that energy, um, you will not be able to mix those two emotions or these two impulses. And so one of the impulses will prevail. Now, it's very often the negative prevails. <laughs> um, so, and uh, what happens is that very often, as a new mother or mother of a newborn, you or someone, some woman might feel that she can do everything. Like every, like ever before, she was able to hold a job, she was able to do all the housework, she was able to, you know, run a sideline, or I don't know, of some kind of um, handiwork, or maybe she was doing some things on computer. Um, writing blogs or whatever she was able to cook she was able to do ironing she was able to do washing and all other millions of things and that um, expectation carries on beyond when the new child arrives uh, into the family and so that expectation continues and um, so we kind of dig a hole for ourselves as women because we we get trapped into that understanding that I can do everything myself. I'm so cool, I can do everything myself. And um, 
there is a lovely saying, you know, uh, to raise a child, it takes a village, which I absolutely love. Now, in the nowadays world, where on earth are you going to take a village? Because more often than not, people travel across the world so often and um, women uh, travel and start living in places where they don't not only they don't have their say mothers and fathers or sisters and brothers around they don't even have very good friends like they could be arriving in a new area uh, nine months uh, or a year before they have uh, have a new child so you know these networks are very much scarce um, so uh, with that in mind you know women think okay this is a new world I've got to do everything myself and she starts to running and running and running and her tank becomes empty and with the sleep deprivation and the frontal lobe is not doing their work because there's no energy to do the work uh, what happens is that the ne negative mind start, starts to prevail and really really destructive thoughts start building on upon it themselves and um, um, and it would be okay if it wasn't for us, for the fear to lose that precious child, that we as women could talk about it. For example, I remember um, when my child, my third child, so I wasn't new to this, <laughs> I was rocking him to sleep and he was not going to sleep for 45 minutes and, and he was screaming his head off. And I was on my own in the house. I've had another toddler to look after. And my, <laughs> I came to the wit's end. And my mind started to tell me really weird things. You rock this child to death. And I was thinking, oh my God. Okay, at the moment, at that point, I didn't kind of click. But a little bit later, I was thinking, oh my God, I am a horrible woman. I hate my child in this moment when they scream for so long um, and I was no way I was gonna share something like that with my husband there was no way I could talk to anybody so I started to think oh my god there's something wrong with me so and these are the things with depression is that we are scared of our thoughts um, but as people as normal human beings we get all sorts of thoughts in our heads we get good thoughts bad thoughts you know normal thoughts somebody might think it's good somebody might think it bad anyway we always judge so only then I realized that it's okay to have thoughts like that and I mean my depression was for example um, um, what's the word du -du -du -du. not medium uh, du -du -du. anyway medium on a medium scale now, in severe cases, women can actually start acting on these thoughts because if the depression hasn't been um, looked into, if the woman hasn't been given a support, if the woman hasn't uh, been given a space, a very safe space to talk about what is going on in her head or what is going on in her life, then, um, you know, depression is going to get worse and worse and worse. And um, so, I tell you, in England, you're not going to lose your child if you have thoughts like that. Even if you act on these thoughts, you're not going to lose your child. Of course, I'm not talking about get, like killing the child and all of that. I, that's, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about the thoughts and thinking about, say, acting out on, on that, okay? Um, so, what I would recommend if you have thoughts like that or if you have acted unusually uh, for yourself or for somebody and if you think you're the worst mother in the world or if you think you're the worst woman in the world I really really suggest you go and talk to somebody you can trust who will not share your um, emotions and will, will not share your experience with somebody else and uh, better than that, I really, really advise you to go to GP and ask for cognitive therapy or any kind of therapy, counseling. Um, so talking to somebody and just laying these ugly thoughts out either on a paper or just out into the uh, universe 
what it allows you to do, it allows you to get rid of them, get them out of your system and actually look at them and see, oh my God, what have I have in my head? And I have to do something about it. So and, and until this happens, you know, not much we can do. And um, so, so this is my little piece of advice. And uh, I really do love, um, I have a very special place for all the uh, young mothers uh, or mothers of young children. So, you know, we all have had thoughts like that. It's normal. <laughs> and um, I do recommend also to build a, a network around you, whether it could be, um, I don't know, your neighbor, uh, old lady who can look after your kids or maybe another friend who has young children and maybe you can swap and share the um, uh, child caring um, options. So, you know, building a network is quite important and, um, you know, and knowing that you cannot do all of that on your own is another thing, okay? You, nobody, um, no woman, no human being can raise a child on their own. It's just not possible. In fact, I have um, compiled a whole list um, of jobs that I had to do as a mother, like night nursing, child minding during the day, cooking uh, meals three times a day, uh, washing, ironing, um, cleaning, uh, what else? I didn't even involve sex at that point but if you take all of each of the uh, uh, functions that you do and if you were to say hire a professional to come and do these jobs it would cost you about quarter of a million a year so a worth of a mother or a worth of a woman is huge okay and we are all capable of doing a lot of them but we also need to nurture ourselves and we also need to say sometimes actually <laughs> no I'm having the me time you know an hour a day is a must uh, for for anyone uh, let alone a mother so uh, this is a bit of uh, kind of uh, sharing of experience um, I hope you appreciate <laughs> I'm all shaking now <laughs> Um, thank you for tuning in and uh, love to all and uh, yeah, see you soon. Satnam.